What's going on, everybody? Aaron here from Departures Capital. We're here at the Rich TV Live. How are you today, Rich? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Looking forward to this show. It's been over a week for us. You know, usually we collaborate every week. So I'm looking forward to talking to you again and getting your opinion on some crazy news that we've had. Obviously, <clears throat> everybody's been hearing about it. The news came out about it free. The stock's down like crazy. You've heard about it. You haven't actually read it yet. So I'm going to read it. And then we're going to get your opinion on it. Okay. Sound good? Yep. All righty. So, a Fria, a shell game with a cannabis side, sorry, a shell game with a cannabis business on the side. So, this is a summary, and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty details. So, a Fria's recent $280 million Latin American acquisitions raised major red flags. Our extensive on the ground research shows that the transactions appear to be largely worthless. Example, the official registered office of Afria's $145 million Jamaican acquisition is an abandoned building that was sold off by the bank earlier this year. Example, Afria's $50 million Argentine acquisition publicly boasted sales of U.S. $11 million in 2017. A worker at the company, however, affirmed that 2017 revenue was only 430 k U.S. Documents show that Afria's insiders are, were likely undisclosed beneficiaries of the deals. We estimate Afria has diverted upwards of 700 million via such transactions or 50% of Afria's total net assets. Afria consistently generates negative cash and its cannabis seems to be of low quality. Interviews with sources describe facilities infested with bugs, stricken with mold and having failed audit inspections. So I'll go into the rest of this article. It's not too long. I mean, well, actually it is pretty long. It's a, it's a 30 page article, but we'll just touch on the, on the background and then a few points and then we'll get your opinion on basically the summary and what they're saying. So anytime an exciting new industry draws widespread attention, it also draws retail capital, which in turn draw unscrupulous actors. This is not a, this is not a story about the cannabis industry and its commercial potential, nor is it a story about valuations and competitive marketplace dynamics. This is simply put about one of the larger companies in the industry that appears to have diverted a tremendous amount of money towards the private interests of its insiders at the direct expense of public shareholders. So like I said, this article is 30 pages long. So we're going to be here all day wow. reading this article and it's available online at Seeking Alpha. It's a 30 page long article. It's a 30 page long article. Yeah. So I can go through just each page. Okay. So back, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but no, 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 no. I just, I just want to get the gist of it. So I think I got an idea of what it is. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. Hmm. Those are some big accusations. Yep. So they're essentially saying that the insiders took 700 million. Um, yep. that's pretty big accusation. And unfortunately for after this is not the first time there's been people that have written articles about their insiders and their dealings. So <laughs> I think that this is some big news and I think it's definitely going to affect the stock. Obviously it has affected the stock. Yep. Now this reminds me of last year, last year, I don't know if you remember this, but last year an article came out that said Oganogram had pesticides in its Yep, food. I remember that. And similar issues with its crops. Was invested in it, Oganogram at the time actually. Yep. And Oganogram plummeted similar to this. And I remember saying at the time that this was a buying opportunity. And Ogamogram went all the way down to a dollar. And I know they've yep. traded much higher than that a year later. Yep. This is kind of like a similar thing. It's just um, a war in the markets. And mm. you got shorters and you got people that are long-term investors. And you got day traders and you got institutions. And you got everybody thrown up in the hedge funds. Everybody yeah. thrown up in the mix here. Yep. And certain people want to take this stock down for their own personal gain. And yep. they were able to do that. They were able to do that with this one article, which is just shows the power of the media. Totally. Crazy. Um, yeah, that's a pretty bad article. Definitely. The fact that it's 30 pages long too. So it's very detailed. Yeah. Now, I heard that Afria has already responded. Is that correct? Do you know anything about this? I got a message on Facebook that's saying that... The direct, okay, so I can read it. 
Investor relations response to allegations. Allegations have been made by the short seller quintessential capital in the report that they published this morning are false and defamatory. The company is preparing a comprehensive response to provide shareholders with facts and is also pursuing all available legal options against quintessential capital. So that was from Joel Pierce, investor relations administrator. Now, I'm not 100% sure if the company's responded yet, but the stock has bounced. At one point, it was down 27%. Now we're down. Um, now we're down 24%. Sorry, I, my friend just arrived. So I, one sec. I, I just gotta do one thing. Can we pause this? Just go get the door. It's okay. So yeah, guys. I don't think oh, this is good. Really, I don't think this is the type of news that we are looking for in the cannabis sector. Obviously, Afri is one of the big three in Canada. When you look at cannabis growth, when you look at Aurora Cannabis and you look at Afria, Afria has to be up there in the big three. And based on this news today, they've obviously come back down a lot. <laughs> so this has hurt the entire sector. They responded, there was a bounce back, and now everything's coming back down again. So the one thing that I find interesting about that article is if you actually listen to what he said about the article it was a short seller sorry rich i'm back a short seller so remember aaron said there was a short seller who put out this article and what happened to yeah. the stock the stock went down yeah so when you get a short seller and they start putting out an article and the stock goes down you have to understand that that's to their benefit because that's how they make money they make money by shorting afria so I'm not surprised that it's going down after they put out this article. So I mean, I mean, look what happens when Citron Research puts out an article, right? That's a pretty successful short, 24% in one day, 27% in one day. 27%, they've job, yeah. They, they, they've done a good job of executing their, executing their plan. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> I mean. Until it was high. And they put out the bad news and it's come down 30% in a day. That's pretty successful for them. No, for sure. And, and 700 million would indicate it could a 50% drop, right? Like if, if the money was actually, if, if what they said was true, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of money being made in this industry. These types of things that he, yeah. that uh, quintessential research is trying to say that Afri is doing are to be quite honest with you, they're, they're problems that all of these companies are having. All of these companies are gonna have insiders making money. That's why they go public. So yeah. there's no advantage to them to, to not make money in this industry. That's why they're in the industry. So people have to recognize that. People do these things to make money. These transactions are happening every day. Um, stocks going up and down and these public companies having issues with pesticides and their crops it's happening with all of these companies every day if you're in the cannabis sector and you're a grower you're going to have issues with your growing yeah let's be honest so what they're saying isn't anything new isn't anything that anybody doesn't already know so i don't feel like they're giving us any news that's like all breaking news to be quite honest with you i don't think there's really anything new here it's just a short seller trying to short a stock and they actually have been able to successfully short a stock. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I see happening here. I mean, they've executed their plan flawlessly. Now, do you think this will be a continued slide for Afria for a while or do you think we're going to find some support soon? Because, I mean, Afria was already, if you like, there was an article comparing Aurora to Canopy to Afria to all those other ones saying how that, you know, Afria had the best value in terms of production capacity and all that kind of stuff compared to Aurora, compared to Canopy, all that. It was already pretty cheap. I so think it's it a buying opportunity. I think that this is a great company. I think this company will prove people wrong. I think that these insider type dealings are very common. I think that shorters putting out news to take stocks down is common. And yeah. I think this is just the markets. We're at war. They, they show yeah. themselves every day. Uh, longers are going to, you know, and promoters are going to get paid to promote stocks and to help companies create visibility. And shorters are going to put out negative news to take stocks down so they can short stocks. This is the market.
I mean, Absolutely. we've seen it before. We've seen it with Kron. We've seen it with Namaste. We've seen it with Tilray. <laughs> you know? And we're going to so. continue to see it because that's the industry that we're in. Yeah. That's the industry we're in. These types of things are just going to happen. It's going to keep happening. And that's the industry we're in. So people have to get used to it. I've been around the game for a long time. I've seen crazy things happen. I've seen big stocks crash. I've seen small stocks explode. I've seen it all, right? So mm. I've seen great companies like Blue Chips, like Nortel Networks go to zero. I've seen, you know, small companies that people thought were garbage go to a hundred, you know, like things like that just happen. So, you, you know, know, it's, it's market. like we, it's like we blinked and IGC went to 14 and then down to a dollar. Correct. And, <laughs> and you know what, now they're climbing back up again. They're actually up today. So yeah, I know. You know the markets AMD is another company we should really talk about a lot because AMD has been climbing and they've been like a huge success story and they were down recently. And now they're climbing up and they're having a huge day today. So yeah, true, true. there's so many companies and there's so many ways to make money and there's so many industries and, you know, we've talked about it before and I don't really think there is anything different happening in the markets right now than we've always seen. It's a war. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to be a war. There's the, the, the cannabis sector is red based on this news probably yeah. as the number one reason, but the rest of the global markets, the Dow Jones is up dramatically. Yeah, we had a we had a green bounce actually. Like a lot of no, well, we're back in the green again. So like Aurora's, Aurora's back in the green again. So it, I was looking at the charts today, and I was you know I said to myself, "Wow, Afria's down. It's like not even ten o'clock. They're down twenty seven percent." I was like, "I'm pretty sure we might see some kind of bounce because you know like recently it's been you know green morning and then boom." And then when it's like red morning, you know, like people are going to buy the dip if it's that early, that much selling that, that fast within the first hour. Just my opinion. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, a lot of people within my community bought the dip and made money already. And then they got out. Like ACB you know? was down 5% at one point and it swung all the way up. It was, it was up over 3.5% like within a couple hours. So that's almost a 10% move. Yeah. That's a big like, swing. I mean, I these markets are going to continue to be volatile, but I think yeah. long term, as long as these companies keep generating large revenue, we're going to see them grow. People are going to attack them. People are going to trash them. People are going to say they're this and that. But at the end of the day, as long as their revenue grows, what are people going to be able to say? Other yeah. than these are great companies. So I think there's a long way to go before they start to retract, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, we just also discussed a funny article, I'll be releasing it in a, in a later video, but I'll get your opinion on it too. A, an article was recently put out, is Cron a better buy than Aurora Cannabis <laughs> by The Motley Fool? And um, it's funny how they were comparing numbers and stuff. They were preparing, comparing production capacity, saying that Cron's production capacity is going to increase by X percent, but at the end of the day, they're producing 500 kilograms a month and ACB is producing like... 7,000 per month or however much it was, but it was just funny. And now Cron is up what 10 or 15% today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's their job, right? Like when you're a promoter, yeah. that's your job, right? So exactly. those guys, those guys, obviously Cron I'm sure is hiring them. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you know, uh, this is the war, right? Like it's the promoters mm -hmm. versus the shorters press releases versus negative news. Um, fear tactics versus real fundamentals and real revenue and real financials. Yeah. And over time, the companies that have real revenue are going to grow. I don't see how anybody can compare Kronos Group to Aurora Cannabis. That's laughable. I know. That's why we want to talk about it because it's such yeah, a it's kind of ridiculous, right? It's laughable. So clearly, it's laughable. So it's not even. <laughs> They're not even in the same ballpark. Yeah, I know exactly. But that just goes to show how like you can have the one side where an article comes out negative about a Fria and it goes down so much. And then an article comes out positive about a company that's not even comparable. And Kron is outperforming Aurora by endfold today. And it's just like, it goes both ways, right? Well, I think Kronos group also got destroyed, right? So they got destroyed. So they're having their come up right now. So yeah. Um, you know, they're fighting different elements. They've got issues with, uh, <laughs> different shorters, infamous short sellers. Yeah. So, 
you know, everybody has their issues right now in this marketplace and the companies that don't, that are clean, uh, the longer they stay in this marketplace, eventually we'll have issues because short sellers will try to take meat off the bone. It's just the way they operate. It's the game. Yeah, for sure. I mean, people want to like, let's face it. People want to make money on the ups and the downs, right? Yeah. yeah. People and do make money on the downs. We want to make money on the ups and the downs too. The key for us is we want to find the bottoms. We're bottom hunters. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I still think that things can go down more guys. So be very careful. We're going into Christmas. People are going to be selling. They're going to be looking for money for Christmas end of the month in December. I know it's the beginning of December, but man, people are spending money right now for Christmas. So just be careful. Uh, I think right now you need to be careful. And that is true. I got one great question for you though, to, uh, end off this video. Can you give me, if you want, I know you just put out a video on 10 great cannabis stocks for December, right? Yeah. So check out Rich's video, 10 great picks for December, but let's give your top three, your top three small cap cannabis picks for December. Wow. <laughs> Putting me on the spot. Um, Sorry. Okay, so that, 10, that top 10 was actually the top 10 revenue generating cannabis stocks in America, reporting in America. Okay, that there we go. Top 10, really just ranked based on revenue, okay? Okay. So that was not the three that I think are going to go up the most in December. If I if had, to, you pick, had to pick three, yeah, if you if had I to pick, pick three. three that I think that I'm looking at right now in December. Yeah. yeah. I would definitely have to say right now, based on this drop, I definitely have to put Afria there. I think yeah. that uh, with this drop right now, I'm really watching them and I think this could be a buying opportunity, but yeah. I want to be watching them. They're definitely one to watch for me. Mm -hmm. And I think Aurora Cannabis at these levels, for me, I think is a buy. And I, bucks, yeah. I think it could go lower. I've been saying it could go low as $5 in Canada. So yes. maybe 350 area in America. I think it could go that low because it's been that low. That would be their low low. And that would definitely be a screaming buy for me. But I think even at these levels, I think Aurora is a buy long term. So yeah, I, I think really, they've got heavy support at seven. I really like them at these levels. And to pick a small company that I'm watching that's doing really well, Chemistry. Chemistry, Chemistry. CHM. Uh, they're up 9% today. I've been cool. talking about them. They're a Canadian company that's doing business in America, strategically focused in America, and I really like that play. Um, they've been going up quietly, strategically. Uh, other than your boy, Rich, no one's talked about them. They've been going up since my videos. And I think that uh, they've been doing a sneak attack, so you need to watch them. And another one for you guys to watch is BVO, Zenabis. Um, yeah, I think they're going to just shock the world. Nobody knows them, but they are one of the biggest players in the world. You might as well give me one more as a small cap, then we can have three small cap stocks. What, under a penny one? Is that what you're saying? Like, uh, just small market cap, let's say under 500 million. You know, I really like Fire, man. I think Fire. fire but you know what? They're doing a reverse, so I got to take them out of there. Sorry. <laughs> I'm removing them. I don't like companies that do reverse splits. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, there's so many good companies. Uh, I think at these levels, I, I really like Oxley. Mm -hmm. I think Oxley is one that... Yeah, right like, now, 83 cents today. Yeah, like, I think at these prices, you have to look at Oxley and think, to get 10,000 shares of this company and just hold it for the future they are going to eventually explode. It's just a matter of time. So yeah, I like there's so many great companies right now. I'm looking at so many companies. There's so many mm -hmm. options. There's great companies in America too. I love Acreage. I love True Leave. I love C-Web. So many great companies, but they're so expensive. <laughs> I'm watching all of them. And yeah, I just want to find the best companies at the bottom. For sure. For sure. No, there's lots of bargains right now. Might be a bit of a waiting game, but there's definitely a lot on sale right now. I love Kush bottles in America. Love them. The CBD space, I mean, NBEV exploding today. Yeah, and for the CBD space, obviously C-Web being the number one CBD company in the world, like, you know, everyone needs to watch them. And truly being a very mm -hmm. big player in the CBD space. So, so many good companies to watch. We're just, I feel like we're blessed to be in this industry, to be quite honest with you. It's so exciting. So many big things are happening every single day. And it's just exciting to be reporting on all these great companies every single day because even when Afria has bad news, we all know it's a great company. So it's literally just a buying opportunity, really. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was a steal at 10. Now we're at, wait, what are we at now for Afria? We're at 7.99. <laughs> 7.99.
So yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's like I said, it, it may just be creating a buying opportunity. We're going to watch it. And that's the beauty of Rich TV Live and Departures Capital. If you want to know what's going on, watch Rich TV Live. Now, watch Departures Capital. Remember, we are not licensed advisors. Do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here at Rich TV Live, okay? If you're not winning, you're not watching. This is your boy, Rich, here with Aaron from Departures Capital. Yo, man, what are you doing for Christmas, bro? I am. Oh, yes. So for Christmas, I'll be spending with my family. And then shortly after that, I'll be headed to St. John's in Antigua and Barbuda for New Year's. And I'll be shooting the show from there. What? Oh, my goodness. I'm so jealous. That's going to be sick. Yeah, it'll be crazy. So I'll be bringing you some better views than just the walls of my condo. <laughs> man, I can't wait, man. I hope you have a great trip, man. And Let's then what are you doing shortly after? I get back. Yeah, December, uh, Jan December, January 12th <laughs> to the 29th, I will be in the Dominican Republic and I'll reporting, I will be reporting to you guys from the beach. I don't know how much stocks I'll be talking about. <laughs> you guys will be doing stock picks. I might, depends on how big the news is. But um, yeah, I might be doing some videos just you know talking about living the good life on the beach because that's what I'd like to be doing. It's getting <laughs> cold here in Vancouver, man. Like below zero today, like cold. I want to... Yeah. Wow. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. It's your boy, Rich. Yeah. Aaron, Departures Capital, Rich TV Live. We out. We're out. Peace. Awesome. That was great. I think that's.